Hey, R2. What do you got there? Tickets? Tickets for what? Ah, Star Wars Celebration. No, you want me to go. I, I'm, I don't think I can go. I'm stuck in this wheelchair and hooked up to all these monitors and IV and I don't think I can go. What do you mean make a medical droid? Oh, I could push I could push it around and then to hold all my monitors and IV bag and all that. Well, that sounds like a pretty good idea. Build a medical droid for an old Jedi as Star Wars cosplay? Yep, that's coming up. You don't have to follow me, though. So we're gonna to try to build a retired Jedi medical droid, like an RJMD. We're actually gonna call it an AARP-65. We start out with a vintage wheelchair. So we're just gonna pull the wheels off and an 18 inch uh, sono tube. We'll also use a walker. This is our uh, Art 5 body cutout. We 3D printed off the club plans, all of our parts. We'll cut these into the cardboard tube. Going with a medical droid theme, we made some uh, defibrillator paddles and we'll also cut a skin out of the styrene. What I did is I taped a bunch of printer paper together, nice and straight. So if we line these up so they're straight, then we know that it's parallel all the way around. I like to use a hand saw because that can make it a lot straighter and more even rather than just one little blade and you run all over the place. Now, you know we don't do screen accuracy around here, so these solid tubes are a little oversized, quarter inch bigger than a regular R2. wheelchair here we're gonna just pull the wheels off we don't want to destroy the things there's our wheels piece of all thread rod who remembers their high school geometry you got this pipe and it's like squishy so you can't just measure across from here to here and hope it's gonna fit measure around here the circumference about 58 and a quarter take 58.25 and divide it by pi that gives you the diameter and then divide that by two and then that'll give you a radius 12 carry the two times pi to the Fudging and plans wrapped around on the pipe. So now we can uh, take it off and cut it on our styrene sheet. If 
found some uh, pixie spray. It's a light tack repositionable adhesive for stencils. on there real nice. Anyway, that'll keep it where it belongs until we get all our pieces cut out, or scored anyway. Curves are a little harder to get around here. Oh, easy, easy, easy. We're not gonna cut everything out, so we'll just have lines scored on there, and we'll go over it with a real small Sharpie. You don't want to bend it too much because they'll snap right on the line. Cut the rest of these out. Jigsaw this all out. Alright, so there's one down. So I took Sharpie and we've gone over all the lines. Hopefully they dry pretty well and won't smudge too bad. Here's a little plan I made up showing the legs and the wheelchair wheels. We'll cut out the legs of three quarter inch plywood while we're waiting on the skins to dry with the ink. All right, we're gonna put a contact cement on this portion and on the tube, because once you stick it together, you can't get it apart. So it's contact cement. Contact cement requires you to uh, do it on both sides. A little globbier than I wanted it. Got my lovely assistant here helping. And we'll try to mount this. Cut through a little bit on both sides, and that way it won't tear out. Glue two of these together. Okay, glamp two of these together. These clamps, when you put glue on it, they tend to squish around a bit. So we're going to put in uh, put in a couple of screws here. There you go, because you can never have too many clamps. All right, we're gonna need some support to hold our legs on, so we're gonna cut us a couple of uh, boards here. A little beeswax on the screw, and they go in pretty nice. Though. Here, our little shoulder piece. It's got the curve of the body. So.
So this is a Forester bit. Now we can uh, just clean that out with a chisel. All right, change the half inch bit. That's what our rod is for the uh, support. But we're going to just drill this out now. So we've got our shoulder piece on. Put on one leg here. So I'll kind of get the idea. So it's going to be hard to put a chisel down in there to clean that little ring out. I've got this old antique tool. It was like an antique router. It's adjustable so you can raise and lower the uh, cutting head. Then we can cut this out. So now it's uh, pretty nice and flush all the way around. Those old guys, you really knew how to make tools. It's Stanley number 71 router. Works pretty slick. Here's where we're at so far. In the horseshoe, the little greeblies go in. I made up some stops, so the router can only go so far, so we don't over cut a line. There's our four little ones here, and two big pockets here. Here's our uh, horseshoe and our other one. Okay, I put screws in from the other side and uh, make them stick out just a little bit. Press that against there and then now we have indications we can drill some pilot holes on that. It's all screwed in from the inside, good and solid. Okay, I know you guys like to see sparks and I uh, got my safety glasses on. Maybe a little loud and a little sparky here. spacer to raise our bottom leg. This is upside down. We got an unused bed pan. It had, it was just, uh, anyway. <laughs> Tack a little weld on here. Got my helmet on and we'll get a little gloves on and we'll tack a little weld. Ground it all off. Got a little primer on our metal piece. Won't rust. Got our wheel bolted on. And our bed pan. You gotta have our bed pan. It works pretty slick. This will uh, hold our bed pan down. There we go. He rolls around really nice, nice and smooth. Next order of business, we'll work on our walker. don't have any way to bend this this tight. I tried with my bender, but the arc is way too big. And we needed a real tight bend here. We uh, commandeered another piece of medical equipment. It's, uh, and I'll tell you, it's one of those portable toilets, the one that the bag hangs underneath. But anyway. is cut out. Here's some cross connects. Once we cut the holes in the body, we can slide these tubes in. So that'll be our 
are push handles for the body. Okay, in order to get our defibrillators in here, we need to mount something back here so they can stay. This little strip of metal I have. And then uh, we put some magnets in our inside the face. Got them in there flush. Put some chrome tape over the top of it and then you won't see them at all. We'll screw in from the back side because uh, at some point we may want to paint those. Right now I don't think I have enough time. Cut out all our paper patterns here, laid out on our styrene. This is the thin one millimeter. All these parts are wrapped around the dome itself. We had to get it laid out here so we don't just start cutting and uh, end up having uh, not enough material. This uh, should just pop out here and we'll keep our plans on attached to it right now. There's rolling wheels here and it, you can pinch them together and it'll cut strips. Put it on here and then just pull it through. And we got all the plans glued on here and laid out. Got a router set up and we'll uh, use a router to cut the three millimeters. That way it gives us a nice perfect circle. We have to go back and cut the inside out as well. So then we end up with these rings. So you use all the interior pieces and all the, all the scraps. And I'll cut all the little parts out of it. These are wedges for the top to give the dome a little slope. This is a uh, pliers to break glass with for like stained glass work. You can just clamp it right on your line and then just give it a little bend or it'll snap pretty good. This is especially when you got some real pointy pieces like this. If you hold this right on that point, then you can really protect that point from being bent over. Anyway, we'll just uh, continue on making little parts. Circles all have these little dotted lines on them. They're marking points so you know where to glue all these pieces. And here's the damage of all cutting. Here's all the parts cut out. Took a couple of days. Now to get it all glued up. So we'll start with this first ring put one band on it and then we put another band on the inside staggering the joints and then we put a third band around it staggering those joints. We got this uh, styrene glue it's like water thin just need to uh, put a little dab in here we'll let that set up a little bit Kind of jumped ahead here. We glued all those square pieces, and now to glue the other side of that ring, we're gonna screw this in. Gets our rings lined up. We glued two of these neck rings together. We got the registration holes here. Dropped a couple of bolts in to line it up. We'll glue the second one here. We glued our little uh, fins all the way around. It's got the bevel on it. And then these will go up through the holes in this upper piece, and that will center it perfectly. Last night while you were sleeping, I glued all these uh, strips on.
clad all of these pieces down inside. Looks real good, just take your little washer, just run it all the way around and it keeps the exact distance. It works pretty slick. It always gives you that just enough to trim off later. spacers that we painted silver. Those are completed legs. I screwed our uh, heart monitor on from the inside, drill a hole for our charging power cord and stereo plug. We'll run our uh, iPad, drops in place. There we go. Heart rhythm acceptable. Bladder capacity 93.8%. Hospital. Red cross right on top here. That'll hold us vertical. There's our AARP 65 medical droid. 20 day build. We got a couple of days left to uh, get it cleaned up and packed up, ready for celebration. Patient, Junkyard Jedi, condition unchanged, all vitals normal, heart rhythm acceptable, bladder capacity 93.8%, vac tube utilization inevitable, brain activity superior as expected, ability to maneuver questionable, continued observation recommended. So what does this prove? Well, that you're never too old to cosplay. And it's never too late to build something out of nothing. <laughs>